In this lesson, we're going to focus on the sacrament of baptism. This is one of the sacraments of initiation, meaning that we're initiated into the family of God. Baptism is simply receiving a gift from God. His grace is given to us to wash away original sin. That's what baptism is, to cleanse us from that original sin that we're born with. And so as we enter into baptism, we receive the gift of faith and we grow deeper in that faith. The gifts of the Holy Spirit are given to us at baptism. Now, whenever we're baptized, there are certain things that, that happen. And I want to just go through a few of the, of the ingredients that's necessary for baptism. When we're baptized, for example, in a church, there are a few things that happen. First of all, holy oil is used as a representative to wash away or cleanse the sin, the original sin. Holy oil symbolizes that cleansing. Water is necessary. Water symbolizes us being reborn. That we're, the word baptism really in Greek means to plunge, to immerse ourselves, to be cleansed and immersed into the family of God. The third thing is a candle. The candle that's lit represents that we're now being enlightened by the gifts of the Holy Spirit and that then we should go out and be the light of Christ to the world. A white garment is oftentimes used and that symbolizes being clean, wiping away that stain of original sin and then putting on Christ. That the white garment represents that we put on Christ and then go out into the world to be Christ to the world. And finally, the sign of the cross, to be signed in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, to believe in the Trinity, that there's one God, three persons, and one God. And so that's the sacrament of baptism. And it's only necessary one time in your entire life. We don't need to be rebaptized over and over again. Once we receive the gift that God gives us, the grace that cleanses us, there's no need to do that again. Now, I want to just refer to one question. It's a very common question that people have about infant baptism. Why do we Catholic Christians baptize infants? Well, I want to turn to Scripture and give an example. There's, there's several examples in Scripture, but I want to just refer to one in, in the Acts of the Apostle. And, and we'll read about how Paul and Silas, who were in jail, they're imprisoned, and the, the prison guard comes to, want, comes to a, the realization of wanting to be saved. And we're told in the scripture that, that Paul tells him that now you, in this moment, in this hour, when you, when you accept Christ as your Savior, that you and your entire household will be baptized. So that gives us a little bit of insight into not only the adult, but children and infants as well. That once we make that decision and we enter into the family of God, certainly we want our children to be part of that family as well. This is what it says in the Acts of the Apostle, chapter 16, verse 25. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was an earthquake so violent that the foundation of the prison were shaken and immediately all of the doors were opened and everyone's chains were unfastened. When the jailer woke up and saw the prison doors wide open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he supposed that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted in a loud voice, do not harm yourself for we are all here. The jailer called for lights and rushing in, he fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them outside and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They answered him, Believe on the Lord Jesus and you will be saved and your household. They spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. At the same hour of the night, he took them washed their wounds, then he and his entire family were baptized without delay. So this is just an example of why we 
feel free to, to submerge our, our infants, our children, into the family of, of Christ without delay. That if we believe that we're part of the family, we certainly want, do not want to delay our entire family being part of God's family as well. And so I think that's very important to, to keep in mind. Just in conclusion, the sacrament of baptism is a powerful sacrament of initiation. And we must keep in mind that it's actually the doorway that allows us to enter into all of the other sacraments in the Catholic Church. For example, if you're not baptized, you can't be married in the Catholic Church. You can't receive Holy Eucharist unless you're baptized, unless you're part of the family. You can't receive any of the other sacraments, for example, reconciliation. So baptism is the first sacrament that we call the sacrament of initiation. And it's a powerful sacrament that God promises to give us His grace. And once we receive that, it's for life. We're cleansed from original sin, and then we become children of God to live out our faith, keeping in mind that it's our choice. It's our choice whether or not we hold our end of the promise to live out the faith, to be the light of Christ to the world, to put on Christ for the world.